pure foot, okay, spill the beans. Um, it's also his birthday today, so I want to sing half a birthday song, and my friend Michalina, who's a better singer than I am, is going to help me sing it. So please welcome Michalina Kenyon, everybody, to the stage. She's also, she's also in the Blondie Car Band, so I'm going to get a preview. Okay, cool, this can be my vocal warm up, because well, I didn't do one, and then I just yeah. uh, have a cold. Please. Vocal warm up. Oh, you that thing. Are you, are you ready to harmonize? Yeah. What's good. a good starting pitch for everybody? Happy! sleep schedule, so needless to say, I got hammered. It was near the end of the night, and I was super stoked to see Vince Staples, one of my favorite rappers, perform at the main stage. I found myself separated from my group of friends, although possibly because I subconsciously wanted to. A big incentive for me to go to music festivals is because I had this childish fantasy of meeting some girl and having an innocent semen summer romance. I know some of you had that as a kid. Not me. During Jeff Tweedy's horrible set, I came across a girl that was sitting on the grass and being the over-social sloppy drunk that I am, I engaged her. We found ourselves talking. I believe my icebreaker was asking of her if she minded that her ass was wet now from sitting on the rain-drenched ground. But she was apart from her friends and quite drank. I offered her some of my rat burger and she accepted. I then told her that I was going to the main stage and she said she'd join me. I offered my hand and she accepted. The whole time I was aware that we were two stumbling drunks who just met. But I found myself telling her things like, I like you a lot, and even kissed her on the cheek. Maybe I even went for the lips. I can't remember. What I do remember, though, was she did get a phone call eventually, promptly answered it. Then she headed away from me and met up with who would I assume was her friend. They talked a bit while I stayed aside. And then I went up to her to say goodbye, but her friend took her by the hand and said some along the lines of, no, she's fine. They went off. I never saw him again. But Vince Staples <laughs> killed it again. Even though I was too drunk to properly hit game, it was a perfect show. But after it was over and I was reunited with my friends and taking the ferry back to Manhattan, I just couldn't communicate properly. Yes, because I was too inebriated, and yes, because I was tired and wanted to sleep ASAP, but I also couldn't get this incident out of my head. Sure, I was probably overthinking it. I didn't hurt her or harass her or stalk her or probably even even inconvenience her, but I had been far less tactful with women for in my life. Ultimately, though, what I was upset about was in light of the Me Too movement and all the wonderful women that have befriended and helped me in my life, this ordeal seemed to suggest I had learned nothing from it all. I couldn't sleep that well that night. Once again, it was also due to my alcohol consumption, but I still couldn't get that girl out of my head. There was one time in my more slobbin days when I was talking to a girl on a subway after a music fest and she asked me if I saw her as a person or as a piece of meat. I told her, of course, that I valued her for humanity, but in reality, I don't know if that was quite the case. I had been aware that people had thought that I was creepy in my mannerisms, especially when drunk and desperate, but I inexplicably kept at it and got particularly bad when my doctor 
gave me a prescription to a certain pharmaceutical that kept me wired and unnaturally happy. My whole life, I've been unorthodox in my development. I definitely had a few years of stunted growth. Some of it was due to my upbringing, some of it was listless media. But I do believe I wasn't raised in an environment that allowed me to flourish. That's why I've been so extensively grateful to have spent the entirety of my post-collegiate years here in New York. Sure, it had become a very different place than the one I observed in movies and rap music during my youth, but it was a place of infinite culture and it was both fun and constructive for me to use as a playground, going to art galleries to mooch off the free booze while feeling like a pseudo-intellectual. <laughs> it's just, it became a mess, in the same way a lot of things in my life turn out that way. Just like college, just like my obsessions, just like any time I think I stumbled on a romance. I won't go into details about all the embarrassing situations I got into between 2013 to 2015, but my first two years out of academics that I consider my most dismal, but I will talk about my Nadir. Yes, I did overdose off a, dr a drug that I didn't tell myself was a really liberating factor in my life, when in reality, it was likely my biggest detriment. I just loved how it felt, washed away my insecurities. I just had no reserve with talking to people about fucking anything, whether it be sex or, well, mainly sex. The euphoric nature of the drug made me think that people would respond to me in a mutual sense that was all but guaranteed. It was also didn't hurt that people kept telling me that was the best drug to get laid to. I still don't know what the fuck those people were talking about. My before and after experience came on a blackout night. Three, I spent three days in a coma and two weeks in recovery. I know, I got off easy compared to some other people. Not only did I make a full recovery, but a relatively quick one. Couldn't tell you any coma fantasies I had, but I do have an inkling that during my coma, I knew I wasn't awake, knew I wasn't in a stable condition, and I was waiting to break out. But looking back at it now, it was basically inevitable with my brash demeanor and unwillingness towards making good decisions back then. But that's it though. Truthfully, I don't regret it. Something I've gathered from all the art I've indulged in over the years, from literature to films to even those dumb anime shows I watched as a teen, is that what really motivates someone to change is hitting rock bottom. I cherished all the love that was sent my way by friends and family during this ordeal, and definitely put me on a better path to growing up. I've always known that there was a lot for me to learn, more than the average person, but this reflects in how I grew up. I'm not the same person I was 20 years ago when I cried if I felt like I got a bad deal trading Pokemon cards. I'm not the same person I was 10 years ago when I would go on about comic books with people expecting they knew and cared about this shit as much as I did. I'm not the same person I was five years ago when I would often abandon my friends on nights out in hopes of finding more personal consumption. I'm not the man I was three years ago either. Before Trump, before Me Too, before that night. This piece isn't meant to be confession. It's not even really an apology either. And I've shown I'm sorry way too often in life. I don't even quite know what I want from you people to take from it. If it motivates you, good. I hope I didn't come off as fucking maudlin or anything. I just wanted to say something that felt a bit sincere. Or maybe I just wanted to stage. Thank you. Woo!